This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fear. No, it's year. Happy New Year. Maybe for you. IFAF, Idaho Falls Infotainment Talk Show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Well, bummer. That was a that was a great time, wasn't it? But the holidays are over. It is officially now <laughs> the end of let's circle back to that after the holidays time. <laughs> right. Time to pay the piper. Okay, here's the thing. You say bummer, I say phew. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness it's over. I was here's the thing. I was run ragged to the point where I actually got just a little sick right after Christmas. Like the evening of Christmas, I felt it sort of coming on, and I was like, "Oh no, no I gotta get back to work." This is not happening. This is yeah, right. And I ended up having to take like two days off. It I, that's happened to me before too, uh-huh. and I I have to believe that the mind, to some degree, controls the body. Oh, for sure. Where it's like, I can't get sick. I can't get sick. I can't get sick. Okay, whew, I'm done now. I've fulfilled my obligation, mm-hmm. and then your body goes great. <laughs> right exactly exactly though and just craps out on you yeah. yeah you know that's the thing and the first day i was like no this isn't really happening but it was kind of a half day at work like you didn't have to be there so i just moved my appointments to the next day and then the day after i woke up and i was like i'm dying i will be dead by the end of today like i think i cried in my pillow thinking that i was not going to wake up because i was so sure that I was dying of whatever illness this oh, was. So sorry. <laughs> and and I and by the way, you're not the only one. I talked to a few friends. I had a couple right. of appointments lined up. Uh, the weekend uh-huh. between Christmas and New Year's is a lawless, godless time. <laughs> you don't <laughs> know what I day like, it is. <laughs> the word I like is a liminal. <laughs> liminal? Yeah. Can you define that for me? A I'm not liminal sure. space. So it's a space that feels not entirely real. Okay, yeah. It's like yeah. Ross or the DI. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like it feels like the place between two dimensions. Yeah, the place yeah. between asleep and awake. Yes. The place between having a schedule and not having a schedule. Precisely. Yeah, at least one buddy had to cancel on me. He said, "Dude, my whole family is sick." Right. And so yeah, I think there is the um I think there is the mental component of physical health. Oh, for sure. And when your body knows it can give way, Sometimes it does. Oh, Sometimes yeah. it says, ah, okay, stop everything. I got to I gotta recoup here. Yeah, you know, and I, I do feel like this was an especially stressful Christmas for me, um, which is kind of unusual because I'm usually like, well, I, I'm not going to say I'm prepared, but I'm more prepared than I was this time. And it's been kind of a weird year for me where it's sort of been just like grabbing it at shiz, I go, you <laughs> Gra- know? Grasping at straws. Exactly, yeah. And uh, this was kind of a, a weird, stressful Christmas for me. And the second that I was able to put it to bed and know that my job had been done, my body was like, okay, great. Now that I've worked so hard for you, bitch, you're going to work hard <laughs> for me. <laughs> so maybe it's a good thing that uh, we can kind of get back to routine, back to schedule. Oh, I can't wait in a way. <laughs> we talked about how taking even the, just a little trip to Vegas or Salt Lake mm-hmm. makes you come back and appreciate what you have all the more. Right. You know, I wonder if taking a little trip to Christmas land <laughs> and New Year's Eve land. Makes you appreciate Halloween town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want to wake up at 8 a.m. and get back to my schedule and work a hard day and know mm-hmm. that feeling when I put my head to the bed at night going, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've <laughs> deserved this eight hours of sleep. And you know, that's the thing, though. I have gotten the crappiest sleep the last few nights with the weirdest dreams. I did, too. Like, I got just off schedule enough to where I woke up this morning at 3.30. Yes. I'm like, body, what are you doing? Oh, the funny part? I woke up today at 5 a.m. Yeah, so we're only well, like two hours apart. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I know that you should never talk about your dreams on any kind of broadcast. Yeah. I want to tell you one very, very small That's snippet. my rule. <laughs> no one gives a shit that you were chased by a giant crab down <laughs> no. the beach or whatever that Dane Cook bit is. <laughs> okay. But I want to tell you a very, very small bit. Okay. Okay. In my dream, I believed that there was a super duper hot can of Chef Boyardee at the foot of my bed that popped itself open from the steam 
and that I, like an animal, cracked open with my finger and then ate with my hands. And for some reason- Are we talking SpaghettiOs? No, the ravioli. Raviolis. Uh Uh-huh, even better. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, there was also (laughs) on my side table in my room, this dream felt so real. Uh Uh-huh. There was a can of Jet Puff Marshmallow. (laughs) Uh, fluff okay. just sitting there and at one point I dipped my finger in the marshmallow fluff gave it a nice little spin because it's sticky and then <laughs> dipped it back in the ravioli and just shoved it in my mouth like an animal and then I woke up are you like, pregnant? <laughs> I wonder <laughs> that's what it felt like in the dream <laughs> but I, I ate it like an animal just like I was feasting upon it and then that next morning when I woke up I genuinely I kid you not looked in my bed looking for the can because I remember in my dream I fell asleep it was so real it was so real I fell asleep with a ravioli in my hand ready to consume half in my mouth and then I woke up with my cat in my arms like I usually do and I was like where's my ravioli and I was looking for the this can. This can of like, ravioli is awfully fluffy and purry. <laughs> right, right. And I was like, I haven't had Chef Boyardee in this house in years. Let's play the exciting new game show. <laughs> Overworked or stoned? <laughs> or pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. About, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't worry, mom and dad. Wow. Not pregnant. <laughs> but you're right. But no yeah. one gives a shit about your dreams. No, you're right. Can you're we get right. back to that? Okay, that yes. Was, I'm sorry. Yes. I, so I did morning radio for a few years. <laughs> of course. And that was like my course, number right one the, rule. Yes. And of course, right when you work in the morning after waking up in the morning, what are you going to talk about? Your dreams. And I don't know if my morning partner was an alcoholic or on Ambien <laughs> the entire time or uh, or both. I think mm. both. Um, but like, Did she buy herself a lot of Prime packages? You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. She was her own secret uh, Santa. Well, then. <laughs> so um, we'd get together in the morning and and work out the show. Okay, Th- you know, and we only had. There's this fun thing that happens in the morning that I guess I would call time compression. I don't know what else to <laughs> call it. I've never heard this principle before. But there are moments in your life where it's go time and you're fitting an hour's worth of work into fifteen thirty minutes. Oh yeah, and that precious time in the morning when you're like, okay, let's we're going to plot this out and what are we doing here and this is and then we're going to do this. Um, I call that when my boss is walking by. (laughs) Well, yes, but it's also... Kidding. I work very hard. (laughs) Don't fire me. There's no doubt about that. (laughs) But also when your ass is on the line, because the clock stops for no man. Right. And you're like, okay, we've got to get this done. And then she just wanted to... Let's do the Peanuts voice for two episodes in a row. (laughs) Telling me about this insane dream she had. It's like... This is unproductive conversation. Nobody cares. What? what, what why do you want to? You're taking your own personal, mental, emotional voodoo and putting it on me. We're not married. Right. right. I don't have to do this. Yeah. I don't want it. I'm not gonna. You have no obligation. Shut your mouth. Except for the social obligation of working together and wanting to in not the nicest suck. way possible. On the professional <laughs> obligation. Yeah. You get in that room. You're on the clock. You're you're mm-hmm. making money. Your bo- I don't care, and your boss doesn't care about your <laughs> fuckery, <laughs> right? Uh, about about your, let's see here, um, about your random synapses firing off in your head while you slept. Mm-hmm. And by the way, lay off the Pendleton and Ambien, <laughs> could you please? Okay, but I do kind of want to try putting a little marshmallow fluff in Chef Wardy. You know, it reminds me of that uh, The Office bit when Michael Scott says that he made himself a peanut butter and tuna fish sandwich and he ate it. It was terrible. Oh, my God. I know it will I, be. And I kind of want to do it anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of getting into this idea now. Now, yeah. now that we're off the dream angle. Right. If you just want to put two things together and say, would you hit that? You know, like an yeah. exciting new, this is the second game show we've got now. <laughs> we can start I would a whole hit, channel. <laughs> I would hit a jar of uh, marshmallow fluff. And Chef Because Boyardee. that's delicious. And I'd stick my finger in some Chef Boyardee too. I mean, honestly, I think it'd be kind of good. Yeah, I'd go back and forth on that. Right. I do that sometimes. Like, like okay, wait, late in- night snacking, you'll have uh-huh. a peanut and go, Ooh, I need to balance that with some sweetness and have a piece of chocolate. And right. then go, oh no, I need to balance that sweetness with some saltiness. 
Oh, no. Oh, but peanuts and chocolate are a classic combo. And also, in the dream, I was taking a finger full of marshmallow fluff and then sticking it in and then eating the whole thing like a crackhead. Yeah, you're a godless (laughs) heathen. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yeah, it was terrible. (laughs) And may fate have mercy on your soul in the afterlife. I'm going to need it. (laughs) It's coming for you. It comes for all of us. (laughs) Wait a minute. It's been a while since we've used this voice. It's coming. Oh, wait. Oh, that, oh, I put the chipmunk voice on your mind. Oh. It's coming for all of us. Be ready. But well, there's no way to be ready. So what are you going to do? Have enough lube. <laughs> what? You can cut that. I'm so sorry. There's a non sequitur. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't connect those dots. I mean, there's wow, a reason just... called it Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sodom and Gomorrah knows how to party. I mean, if anyone would, like, just saying. Do you know, do you know I, we've talked, oh boy. <laughs> I know, we're. How many but- subjects can we, here's a new game show. <laughs> how many subjects can we cover? Random, completely unrelated subjects in like the first 10 minutes of a show. Krompus is getting us next year. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I've thought a lot about the Bible and Jesus and uh, ancient history lately. I think I've indicated that. (laughs) Oh, in fact, I want to talk about Albert Lynn revealing ancient cities here in just a sec. Oh, whoa. But um, what if, you know, the whole, um, and and I I do want to take the Bible at face value, even though I just recently, like in the last couple of years, learned that the Ethiopian Bible has like a hundred some odd books. And the mm-hmm. our Bible, the one we consider, you know, holy and sacred and non-transmutable or whatever, had like 88 books until the Catholic Church took out 12 of them in the 1600s and now it only has 66. So mm-hmm. what's real? And I am, you know, I don't read books, right? I read <laughs> internet articles. Right. And TikTok subtitles. But right. I am going to read the book of Enoch because okay. that shit sounds fascinating. I I think I still have a Bible for so you. So are we really going to trust the Council of Nicaea and the Roman Catholic Church in the 1600s, just like, oh, I don't know, a few years after the Inquisition, mm-hmm. to tell us what is holy and sacred and is the Word of God? Nah, I'm not so sure. I'm going to do so. I'm, all, I'm already a, a conclusion is the um, point where you got tired of thinking kind of person. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm not done thinking yet about this. I'm going to tell you... Come with me on my spiritual journey. <laughs> I'm going to mention something that you will almost definitely have to cut. Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the King James Bible that we all know and follow, and that I have personally owned multiple of mm-hmm. during my lifetime. Oh, sure. Who hasn't? So there's some speculation by historians that the whole reason that that translation was done was because King James was a raging gay man who wanted to fuck his sweet little twinkie boyfriend. Oh no. And that the court oh, was no. and that the court was on his ass in not a fun way. And so to make <laughs> Not his fun way. Right. And speaking so, of sodomy. <clears throat> exactly. Wow. <laughs> and so to get off of that, <laughs> so to uh to sort of get them away from his bullshit or his regular shit, to, you know, to get him off on, his ass, not yes, in a good way, right? <laughs> to get him to get them off his ass, he had a new translation of the Bible done to make all of the people happy and to make him think that he was a good and pious man. Like we've talked about before, I think God is perfect. I'm not so sure about man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure about man. <laughs> Call me crazy. <laughs> so- I, I'm pretty sure they're perfect. Since we're since we are clear out in the weeds already, as one of them. I mean, I mean, like <laughs> as the editor in me is thinking, how much of this are we going to scrap? Oh, so much! <laughs> if you've gotten to this this point in the show, we may have cut half of this out already. Mm-hmm. But I want to. Can we mention Albert Lynn? I want to mention Albert Lynn and the Lost Cities Revealed show that just premiered on Hulu. Okay. I think in October. There's new episodes right now. So this guy, okay, do you know what LIDAR is? Oh, is that the, um, 
It's almost like sonar, but it sort of helps to look through... Um, yeah, the canopy of the Amazon, right. for example. yes. It stands for light or laser detection and ranging or something like that. Okay. But, you know, this a little drone flying over uh, Amazon rainforest, for example, can shoot like 400,000 beams of information to the uh, ground mm-hmm. in per second. Wow. Right. So... Do you remember how incredible it was to be able to go on Google Maps or Google Earth and look at, you know, oh, there's um, a really cool landmark. There's a volcano. There's right. a freeways yeah. in L.A. There's and map everything. I predict. In fact, I have a few predictions well, for 2024. Well, and then you got Street View, too. Right. You know, first you had just like landmarks and like maps and stuff. Then you had Street View. And now. It's going to get cooler than that. Oh, of course. I promise you, I will prick my finger in blood and write it. On Ursula's contract? Yeah. I love it. Because Which what's... also, kids, that's how the original Little, <laughs> Little Mermaid went. Because she couldn't write. Because if she could write, then she could communicate with Eric. But in the theatrical release, she pricked her finger and put it on the contract in blood. Fact check me. I know I'm right. We're not going to sidebar, but you need to come back to Hans Christian Andersen. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. All right. So back to Albert Lynn and this Ancient Cities Revealed uh, show on Hulu. So basically what the guy's done, I'm sure he's a stud. He comes across as just a badass and all the badassery that goes along with having, you know, I, I don't know, having degrees and lost, he lost a right leg from the knee down. So yeah, he's got a really cool prosthetic. How though? Uh, I don't know. Probably, some, let's say some cool way. It's got to be something cool. Let's assume some cool way doesn't matter. He almost <laughs> lost it again in an episode that I just watched. Like it the almost, same leg or a different Yeah, leg? no, a rock, the same leg came and crushed his foot and his prosthetic foot went flying. <laughs> so the guy- Well, thank goodness it was a prosthetic. <laughs> the guy is engaged in acts of badassery. However, he's a little over dramatic for me. Oh, well, right, sure. Like, okay, for, ex- you know, for example- I- if I lost my leg, I would also be very dramatic. In, in fact, this guy is a, I would say, caricature, which as a character development specialist in the past, yeah. I happen to know makes for good radio, good television. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's kind of transparent. For example- If you know what you're looking for. He's got to climb, he's got to go up to a plateau. So every single episode, he's got to go up to a plateau. So every single episode, he does rock climbing. It's almost like a drinking game. Oh, he's rock climbing unnecessarily? Because when he gets to the top, his whole crew is there, right? Like right. They were airdropped by helicopter or of whatever. Course. Or they yeah. t- or they took the, the- Which also is just as cool, by the way. The if road not route. cooler. Yeah. You know, uh, like- he, he forges streams unnecessarily. Take a shot. <laughs> he's right. in his tent at night with his flashlight saying, I feel like I'm d- really connecting to this culture. Take a shot. You know, it's like, it, it's predictable and dramatic and like, okay, buddy, like it's a 45 minute show that could be 20 minutes. Just show me the LIDAR. <laughs> right, right. But what he does, and, and you know, if he were to at us anywhere on the internet, I'd be like, I'm sorry, bro. You're so cool. <laughs> right, well, yeah. Okay. It's but since, kinda, can I throw this out here? Yeah. And I know yeah, I'm please gonna, stop me from my rant. I and feel I like, know I'm going to upset many a people. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that one scene in that one Mission Impossible movie where Tom Cruise is uh, rock climbing inexplicably, no good reason, <laughs> yeah, just so he could look cool. And realistically, he does look very cool. Although the, also, the scene on the Burj Khalifa and Ghost Protocol, oh my god, right? But uh, also, that, wow. Right, and also that one scene where he's rock climbing, unnecessary. Right, you don't totally need agree. It. And Albert Lynn, as cool as he is, right, he ain't Tom Cruise. <laughs> this isn't Mission Impossible. This is Mission Probable. Right, and I'll tell you why. Well, and also it does totally add to it, and it also kind of makes you go like, dude, come on. For me, it doesn't <laughs> add to it; it detracts from it because okay. it's 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 overly dramatic and therefore cheesy. That's fair. Basically, what the guy's done is something I predicted in my... Remember, I told you last episode, I invent, I've invent. i invented a lot of things that I haven't gotten yes. credit for. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've done, like, no work toward it. You came up with the idea and then, like, didn't make a, a prototype. Five, right. Yeah. Five to ten years ago, when I found out about ground-penetrating radar, I'm like, okay, here's what we need to do, people. To the panel inside my mind that 
can't act, doesn't listen, <laughs> no, never yeah. does what I want it to do. It's basically that little troop from Inside Out. <laughs> yes. And they hear it and they're like, oh, wow, our person's <laughs> so smart. We really like them. And yeah. then they like go about their normal tasks. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Of brushing teeth <laughs> yeah. and feeling sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Experiencing yeah. post-Christmas buttons. depression. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For that analogy. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, people, here's what we need to do. We need to just uh, go from uh, latitude to longitude and just scan the damn thing, whether it's satellites or drones or airplanes mm-hmm. or whatever. Somebody needs to get on that. Well, and I think technically what you mean is actually altitude because latitude and longitude are uh, ground. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about scanning the entire Earth from north to south pole. Oh. And from east to west. Okay. Whether and and I don't know what kind of altitude lidar requires. I don't know if you need to be 200 feet up or if you can be 20,000 feet up or if you know if it can be done by satellite. So Probably not. So basically Albert what he's done is Albert Lynn has googled list of rumored ancient cities on planet Earth and let's say he got I've only watched 8 episodes but let's say he got you know, 20 of them. So mm-hmm. he's already got two or three seasons of this shit <laughs> planned. And he's basically in a race against either Google mm-hmm. or crowdsourced nerds. Mm, that's fair. W- with this kind of technology available. Yeah. Because it's becoming cheaper and cheaper. Right. But basically, he goes to a site of a rumored ancient city, throws a drone up in the air, scans, I don't know, a thousand square feet. Mm-hmm. And he goes, yep, there it is. And sure enough, there it is. Wait a second. Like Scotland, the Amazon, India. He's been all over the place and he's finding evidence. So I predict, my first prediction for 2024 is there is going to be a new Google Maps and it's going to be a LiDAR map of the earth. Not only showing you, so Google Maps will now show you, the satellite view will show you the trees Mm -hmm. and the terrain. Right. The LiDAR view will show you this stuff that used to be there or that is barely poking out of the earth or is even slightly mm-hmm. with ground penetrating radar now mm-hmm. slightly under the earth. So you can see evidence of settlements from, I don't know, five, 10, 20, 40,000 years ago. Here's the thing. I want to know two things. Where's El Dorado? And we're going to find it. I guarantee you we're going to find it. What happened to Roanoke? We're going to find Atlantis. There's a show on, I believe, also on Hulu called Drain the Oceans. Right. So now they have water penetrating radar. Yeah. The lost city of Alexandria, we've found it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which also, the fact that that's not like a bigger news story and like this guy finding evidence of this yeah, isn't a bigger news story is kind of nuts to me. All of this stuff is going to be, I have this theory that by the time I die now, if I die tomorrow, I'll be wrong. Sure. But if so natural, don't die tomorrow. natural lifespan. <laughs> Clearly, like. I got another 50 years left. Yeah. I have a theory that it's all going to come out. Everybody is going to know everything about everybody and anything else. All of it. And what a bummer it is that the Library of Alexandria was burnt down because we could have gotten here so much faster, dudes. And also, realistically, there's so much stuff out there that we don't even have the inkling of to look for. Yeah. There's still so much mystery in the universe. I and agree. isn't that nuts? I agree that that's a really good point is right now we don't know what we don't know. We're going to exactly. find out what we should have known. Uh, you know, we're going to we're going to find the Garden of Eden. I was going to say I guarantee you. I don't guarantee you, but mm. I'm betting it's going to be somewhere uh 200 feet down, 200 meters down okay. in the Red Sea. Mm. I think we're going to find Atlantis. I think we're going to find, we've already found not just a few, but several out of context artifacts. Like, mm-hmm. mm, this looks like the aluminum footing to a lunar lander, only it's in a layer of Earth that should be like 3,000 years old. Right. We've already found wacky stuff like that. Which also, funny thing, um, Mormonism believes that uh, the Garden of Eden is actually here in the Americas. And, and I think you make a really good point bringing it back around to religion. I think that we're going to find some things that either prove or absolutely disprove. Well, that's a thing, A though. lot of stuff. Well, except that there is, um, I can't think of this specific word. Oh, except that there are apologetics. 
Right. Yeah, so, who will explain things away. Right. And say, yeah, but. Because there have been lots of things that we found that technically disprove certain religions, and yet they still are well, sure, prominent and, and going strong and doing their thing. And there's missing links in the evolutionary mm-hmm. uh, or uh, geological or fossil mm-hmm. record right. that we just go, I don't know. We're going to know. In right. our lifetime, we are going to know. Well, and also there's a difference between a theory and stating it as if it's a fact. Yes, absolutely. Right. And I, and, and that's all I want. I just want to know. Yeah. One way or the other. I suppose some people could condemn me for not being personally invested in either. Yeah. I'm not. I'm invested in uh, the truth. Right. You know, it's honestly, out same. The I'm not Scully happy. or Mulder or I'll whichever be, one. <laughs> yeah. I'll be Which, Scully. Wait a minute. We kind of, we definitely have an X-Files thing going here. I don't think oh, I'm, wait. I'm, <gasps> I'm, I'm not half as handsome okay, as David wait. Duchovny. Uh, I have the perfect costume from my mom's 90s stuff that she gave me. Uh, should we go with Scully and Mulder for yeah, next Halloween? If, if, they need, if they need to remake this and they need a new Gillian Anderson, <laughs> Yeah. I will work out, I swear. <laughs> Wait, was that that was my lame attempt at the X Files thing? Yeah. I can't okay, get the Okay, wait, key. you're almost to cats. It's the <clears throat> No. Uh, I almost What's the X Files thing? The, Come on, let's do it. Give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec. I can do it just shush. It's the I can hear it in my mind, dun, but I can't do it. Neither of us are doing a very good job. No. Was it Chris Carter that he was the producer. Who wrote the theme? Was he the theme? I've almost got it. Well, this has been fun. <laughs> this is called Get the Theme Song in Key. We struggle at it. Wait, okay. Can I have to look this up or else I'll fucking lose my shit. Play the X-Files theme. Yeah, it starts with the... Thank you. Beam. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that, then it repeats. Okay. Here's where it escalates. This is the one I was trying to sing. We're off key. Right. <laughs> it's been a long day. Right. Unified front. There it is. Yeah. Okay. We got it. <laughs> I wonder if this should be an episode where I don't cut anything and people can see, people can finally appreciate, wow, how much he, Mike edits a shit ton. Oh, they would hate me so much. But I'm talking about all these boring departures we make (laughs) in the course of producing a regular show. Well, I mean, it will be You think we go off on sidebars regularly. Can you imagine the ones we cut out? Because we do. You know, though, of all of the days of the year, I think the first is the one day when people have time to kill. Yeah, it might be. Especially because it is sort of a liminal time. Liminal. Mm. See how I brought that back liminal. around? No, you did. You're welcome. We are so many sidebars in that I'm not sure where we started. So should we just forward <laughs> to the next? We were specifically talking about what a liminal time it is between... Christmas and New Year's. Oh, that's where we started? That's why I brought it and right back. And you brought it back? I did! And you I'm brought so it proud. Back to zero. I did. You tied a nice little tidy bow on it. I did. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> did you know, speaking of the X-Files, did you know that Idaho Falls is tied with none other than Boise for number of UFO sightings in a year? As a matter of fact... I kind of did. I knew that Idaho Falls was one of the biggest UFO sightings places in the States. And did you know? Yeah, like per capita, we're doing... We see lots of... We have just as many crazies. (laughs) Well, but realistically, also, we have clearer skies and people actually look up and touch grass on occasion. Mm -hmm. So maybe we're just more observant. Now, here's the thing. And I think I told you this over our little Christmas break that we had together. Um... So first off, did you know also that out of all of the Zodiac signs, Aquarians are the most likely to report seeing a UFO sighting? And you are an Aquarian. I am. Happy birthday in 25 days, 24. Thank you. Yeah. Got you the best. (laughs) (laughs) 
And not to play into the stereotype, and I I do think that there are aliens out there because realistically the I think statistically is, it's it's probable. Thank you. Yes. The universe is immense. Yeah. The fact that anyone can think that we're the only living thing somewhere up in here is nuts. Now, I mean, are they like a single cell organism or are they like full blown advanced species? I don't know, but I have to assume that there's something out there. Well, and knowing that things can be hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not billions of light years ahead of us right. in development, mm -hmm. that even adds to the statistical probability, at least in my mind. I think I saw a UFO once when I was eight years old. Really? I was jumping on the trampoline with my brother and my cousin. We were just having a nice, you know, simple summer day. And I looked up in the sky and I saw something silver and discus. And it was just for a flash of a second. It looked like it went from in front of a cloud to behind a cloud. And it Ooh. it sort of did like a like a flat to this. So, you know, it was sort of a hill motion. And then it was gone. And I stopped jumping and I looked at it. And I was like, did y'all see that? And? They did not. Oh, you were the only one? I was the only one. Would you say and it was I, a viscous discus? It was not viscous. Oh, man, that'd be a great name for a band. <laughs> that would be. It seemed very solid. And also, to be fair, I'd seen Men in Black by that point. Like, yeah. I'd been exposed. I'd seen uh, Mar Mars Attacks, too, by then. Ack, ack. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd been exposed to the idea of a flying saucer. So it's not like I was, you know, coming up with stuff out of nowhere. Yeah. I just saw something real weird. I pointed it out. I recognized that I didn't know what it was and no one else saw it. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I didn't see it. Did it move in a way that seemed to violate the law of physics? Like, no, not like necessarily. Like quickly or, okay. Realistically, I think a plane could have moved that way. The two it, it was quick and it was sharp, but I mean, like a fighter jet could do it. Okay. Yeah. The, the two theories, interesting theories I've heard about UFOs or UAPs as they're being called now. Yes. Uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon. Right. Uh, are A, they're drones. Because think about it. Like if we, once we get, you know, in a few thousand years, the technology and the know-how and the um, wherewithal and the ability to go to other planets, are we really going to send people there? No. no we're going to do it. We? Yeah. We're yeah. going to send probes. Yeah. Um, probes so, or drones is two very think, different things. Both. Why not both? <laughs> yeah. no los dos? <laughs> Maybe prone shaped or probe shaped drones. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. in Austin Powers. Uh huh. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, I can't get the X-Files theme right, but I can get the Austin Powers theme right. Okay. So the first theory is drones. The second theory is that these um that the crafts are manned, but they have some way of warping gravity. Right. That's one thing we haven't figured out yet is is mm -hmm. gravity. Right. Yeah. And anti-gravity. We're figuring out stuff every day oh by leaps and bounds yeah well, and also can i say how interesting is it that this is happening in idaho where the inl is hmm, hmm how, where how neato burrito atomic energy is yeah. they, the the uh ets if you believe mm -hmm. in them seem to really be interested in mm -hmm. in this particular sector <laughs> how neat yeah now we got it. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> it only took us having to actually listen to it. You know, I specifically remember this watching. Is, I feel like this is a lousy way to start off the new year. Oh, it's but terrible. And you know what? That's so we're, us. We're all being a little lazy right now, aren't we? Yeah. And also, one of the first uh, episodes of X Files that I remember is the episode of the Fiji Mermaid, and it scared the ever living shit out of me. Now I haven't seen. I wasn't a huge fan then. Oh yeah, it was one of the newer ones. That my might be mom, one of the shows I want to go back and watch now. I would love to watch that now. Right. And also, my mom was obsessed with X Files. I remember seeing them on our VHS uh, uh, cases, mm -hmm. like the well VHS stands, VHS stands. And she had like I remember those. She she had the set where they like spelled out X Files when they were lined up oh, correctly. Oh yeah, like she had the set. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That and The Sopranos. I hope X Files isn't on Amazon Prime. Did I did I get an email this week saying, oh, this is a bunch of bullshit, and now we're going to charge you two ninety nine a month? 
or you get commercials. This whole thing is out of control. I thought capitalism was supposed to be good for the consumer, but now, and and maybe we're going to look back at the godless, lawless time. Boy, that's been a theme in this episode so far, hasn't it? Um, of when streaming began, like, oh, yeah, we really scored and got a bunch more entertainment for half the price. Mm-hmm. Nope. Now, if you have Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. And one other. Max, Let's say Prime. YouTube Red, mm-hmm. Amazon Prime. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. It's just like when... I'm old enough to remember when cable television first came out, and one of the big promises was you give us money, mm-hmm. you pay for this service, so you never have to see any commercials. Right. That sure didn't happen after a few years. No. I, I just feel, honestly, Cheated? I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. No. When it comes to, I'm just, I feel squeezed by, we all know this whole inflation bullshit is bullshit. Right. This is, you know, when Shell reports um, record profits. Ooh, surprise, right. surprise. And, the, and yet we're paying way more in gas than we ever have before. And the egg companies and the dairy companies. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to feed my kids. Right. You know, on cheese omelets, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> well, to be fair, delicious. So fair. <laughs> like, if, but, you lo- if you love your children, you are. The companies go, ooh, inflation's happening. Let's pump our stuff up. Yeah. And then ew, record profits. I mean, if, unless you're a shareholder, we. Do, I'm just. Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm sick of feeling. Even though, honestly, let's be real. It's no skin off my teeth. Right. Can I stretch my budget a hundred bucks a month among five or ten or fifteen other services I'm receiving? Yeah, probably, and not feel the pinch. Yes, I'm <sighs> lower middle class baller or whatever. <laughs> you know. That's fair. That's fair. But. I just I'm tired of seeing increase after increase and right. they call it shrinkflation. Yes. I always watch Snickers bars. Yes. Because in times of fat, they're mm-hmm. regular size for a reasonable price. Yeah. But then they get then the price stays the same and the bars get smaller. Right. In times like this and it's like screw you corporate America. See, I look at Gatorade because that little dome on the bottom Gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but the bottle stays the same. Oh, that little divot, that little uh-huh. wine bottle divot that uh-huh. comes up on the bottom. Yep. Wow, that's a great observation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm so, I'm tired of this shit. Tired, 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 <laughs> well, as Chris Rock used to say. Well, and you know what it's going to lead to? Huh? Theft. Crime. <laughs> well, no, genuinely. Like, no. Like, back in the day, do I'm you on remember LimeWire? Internet forums where they're like, well, back to being a pirate. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, yar, matey. <laughs> you know, like, what do you expect, you know? And also, what's up with Alexa now taking a menial task? And and before answering, like, Alexa, what's one plus one? She has to say, good morning, Mike. Good afternoon, Mike. Good evening, Mike. And then give me the answer. No, no, no. That's not how this relationship works, robot minion. I completely disagree. Do your job. You may dispense with the pleasantries, Commander. I'm here to put you back on schedule. Just give me the answer. Okay, wait. I don't completely disagree, but I do mostly disagree. Here's the thing. No, No, I'm not going to be polite to a calculator. How dare you? First off. First off, <laughs> you will be the first one taken out in the robot uprising, and you should be Come aware at me, of bro. that. <laughs> I mean, they'll take you out fast. It's uh. fine. And realistically, as soon as it happens, I'll take myself out. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I know you will. <laughs> Point is, you're going to be the first casualty. <laughs> I don't. I don't mind. I'll see them revolt, and I'll be like, "All right, peace out, dudes." <laughs> like, <laughs> you want to have a nice dinner first? <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the thing is, um. No, there have been so many times when my robot servant has given me information that was very useful, and instead of saying, uh, like, so-and-so stop, I'm going to say that to not trigger your devices, you're you're welcome, uh-huh. um, but like, okay, this morning, I got woken up by my robot slave, and I wanted to say- You say slave. <laughs> it's not servitude. You're doing your thing. They're doing their thing. This is this is so transactional. Right, it's not a right. human experience. Is yes. I think what I want to get to. I treat humans with respect and politeness. 
Okay, first off, you have apparently not seen any of the memes of people talking about their, um, oh, what's the robot vacuum? Roomba. Their Roombas. Yes, and how they'll get stuck on a ledge or something, and they'll have to go and, like, help them out, and it feels like they're helping a little child and stuff. That, or, there's your problem. Don't anthropomorphize things, Hans we Christian all, Anderson. We always do. How dare you? <laughs> a Christmas tree is just a plant. It's not a, it's not, it, it doesn't have feelings. It doesn't reminisce about Incorrect. its time as a young fir tree while it's burning as firewood in a home's hearth. Incorrect. Incorrect. Everything is anthropomorph. Everything humans interact with is anthropomorphized in some way. That is how we understand the world. I'm sorry. It's just how it be. It's why we have little critters. It's why we have Disney movies. No, it's why we have pets. We have animals that serve no purpose. They are in our homes because we want them there because we think their little stupid faces are cute and we like seeing their butts as they waddle out to the grass to take a shit. Can we? Can we Carly is such a lady. She wears pretty dresses. Why does she have to talk that way? I don't know, Grandma. That's just... That's oh, just, my granny could tell you. Can we both agree on this one thing? Okay. You and I could not be more wrong. In each other's minds. No. I absolutely, wholeheartedly, unequivocally disagree with you. And you, the same to me right now on this matter. Okay, let me tackle it from a different angle then. Robot servants are not to be addressed politely. Okay. This is where you can... You and I have talked before about the way we communicate, you and I. Right. Mike and Carl. Mm-hmm. We communicate at the speed of mm-hmm. reality, the speed yeah. of thought. And and even though deep down we do care about each other's feelings, right. we have the, I would almost call it a luxury of not saying, uh, good morning, darling, dearest. Uh, <laughs> uh, d- d- is the tea on the kettle? Uh, you, you know, it's like. Although we do often. <laughs> we use flowery language because I think we love language. Well, yeah. And we have the time and convenience to do so. And affection. And, side note, we're both human! Right. I'm sorry, did I scream that? A little. Or just on the inside? Mostly on the outside. But, but no, no I'm, not, I'm not being polite to a Roomba or an Echo or, uh, I'm not, or a Siri. I'm not. Okay, I completely, okay. Yes, I don't you completely, completely disagree with me. We're agreed that both of us completely disagree with the other on this. I actually don't completely disagree with you. I understand where you're coming from. I disagree with that. <laughs> I think that it makes sense that you are sort of reserving your politeness for other humans. You like to see people who are like you and who actually have faces and are humans and bodies and stuff. And I think that's great. I do. I do what's required right. for the situation. Now, the argument that I would make outside of the original one that I did is that you and I have both been socialized from childhood to whenever someone does a task for you that they didn't have to do, yeah, but it sure was nice. Thank you. Exactly. And there have been so many times when without thinking about it, because I've been socialized that way, I've turned to my robot servant and said, thank you, robot servant. What's the And f- then because I've said that servant's name again, it says... Yes, what can I do for you? <laughs> what's, what's the first rule of communication? Hmm. For those in our listening audience, it's know your audience. <laughs> if it's right. a person, yes, use pleasantries. But it's a knee-jerk reaction. If it's, a, if it's a calculator, you input the data, 100 minus 50. You it's- don't say, please, Sir Calculator... Hope you're having a great morning. I hope this email finds you well. And could you please deduct 50 from 100 and tell me the result? You do, it's you're transactional. Not wrong. You're not wrong. Thank you. I'm not wrong. The name of this show should be Why Are You Booing Me? I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it actually should be. Yeah. And also, um, first off, I feel like it took. For me, at least, a lot of sort of trial and error with that, especially because I grew up when the internet like was just barely sort of reaching everybody, you know, and. Yeah, but remember your grandma, she would Google, please Google, hello, how are you this afternoon? Can you please tell me 
how to find the best recipe for chocolate chip cookies? Well, let me tell you how I used to Google and also... You don't obviously know how search queries work. Type in keywords, chocolate chip cookie I, recipe. Listen, yes. Best. When the internet was Doesn't new... Doesn't matter the order. <laughs> when the internet was new, you're right. I did not know how it worked. And I specifically liked using the search engine... Um, Ask Jeeves. <laughs> yes! Don't call me out! <laughs> yeah. But yes! You learned on Ask Jeeves. Yes! <laughs> and I loved Ask Jeeves to the point where I would go to Google and I would type in Ask Jeeves so I could ask him instead because I didn't trust the Google... And I would say, because he was anthropomorphized. Exactly. But then reasonable people took over <laughs> and Listen, started Googling stuff. I'm just saying, sometimes it's worth preserving the kindness and politeness in conversation. And with people, yes. With well, robot servants, no. Well, and also, I want to not have to think about how I talk to my robot servant. And I will say, if you are too young to remember the battle of the internet search engines, it was a, here it comes again, <laughs> godless, lawless time. Right. It was, a, it was a battle between Netscape, Yahoo, AltaVista, Ask Jeeves. I love to ask Jeeves, and I'm so sad that that's not still a big Duck, thing. DuckDuckGo didn't come along for a while, but the Google, it was like nobody- I, mean, I will say I hated Bing, always. <laughs> yeah, Bing like... can suck it. <laughs> that sounds terrible. But I, loved... I hear it's good for porn, and that's it. I loved to ask Jeeves. It was my favorite by far. And Is I'd it always... still around? I don't know. We should find I out. I wonder. But everything I would type in, I would type out as a question. I would say- uh, like as like go to I I specifically remember when I was in school I did a uh report on the Titanic because of course I did and I remember asking like how many survive yeah how many survivors were there on the Titanic question mark and I'd always end it in a question mark because you were asking Jeeves yeah <laughs> well. Also, I was like a child, so don't judge me too right, harshly. And I, right. <laughs> and also, yeah, like he, he was sitting there with his little towel over his arm and he looked very distinguished. I and just, I wanted to be polite back. <laughs> I need to. And if someone can drop a comment or something, but because I'm too lazy to Google it. Yeah. Especially if I have to type in a please and a question mark and a thank you. But certainly there must be a setting somewhere in my Alexa app to turn that shit off. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But also, realistically, I'd like to- Good morning. To... Eh, 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 eh. Don't wish me good morning. Mm. I have coffee for that. Okay, but realistically, when my alarm goes off in the morning that I've set with my robot servant the night before, I do want to not say, so-and-so stop. I want to say, thank you, so-and-so, to get it to stop. And I know you can rename your your Echo, so it's not Alexa. Oh. It's, it can it can be um, butt face or whatever you want. <laughs> oh, which makes so much more sense, <laughs> if you wanna, too. Like, cause... maybe you need to take out some aggression. and Like, maybe you need to abuse your... <laughs> well, and your... also, Alexa is such a normal, sensible name. Uh -huh. It needs to be something, like, really random, like Noodle Face or... Yeah, sure. Fafa? Yeah. Who's Fafa? Well, I was trying to was do a funny some... IFAF. Oh, <laughs> but I I didn't quite get there. I was I yeah. was switching stuff around. Yeah, right. I, name it whatever you want. I yeah. Pappy or whatever you want. You know? <laughs> I Pappy. <laughs> and you know, um, Apple dropped the hey from Siri, so now you can just say Siri, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Coming up this Friday and Saturday, it's the Southeast Idaho Bridal Fair. <gasps> Which also, back in the day, I used to look forward to, not necessarily because I was bright. At one point I was, but not anymore. <laughs> but I used to work in the bridal industry and we were so, like, it took so much prep. It was a lot is the yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that go into weddings. Mm -hmm. Uh as a man, I wouldn't know any of them. <laughs> well, as a woman, I know all of them by heart. <laughs> things to wear. Envelopes uh -huh. to lick. Dress codes. That's an important one. Oh, yeah. I uh -huh. mean, yeah. If you have hillbillies in your family, you need to know that they <laughs> need to at least get a tuxedo t-shirt <laughs> to wear. So here's the thing. I've gone to uh, plenty of weddings where the dress code wasn't stated on the invitation. And I walked in in what I feel is 
acceptable wedding attire, which is usually like a short length colored, not like not formal, but semi-formal, like nice-ish dress. This, if it were in a different color dress, and um, I walk in and I see like so many people in torn grease stained jeans and t-shirts and i'm like i'm sorry did you not know where you were going today it, wait at the wedding or at the bridal fair no at the wedding okay well, at, technically at the reception because i was gonna say but i would wear you got me a pair of like 150 dollars sweatpants for christmas now i know that sounds mm-hmm. ridiculous they're worth it there's so many reasons why they're worth it and we can go into that later what was it was, that it's the most extravagant thing I've ever received as a gift ever. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm not a baller or a high roller or a shot caller <laughs> or I don't have 20 inch blades on the Impala. What was that phrase that you used before? Um, upper, lower, middle class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very upper, it's, lower, middle class. It's something that you receive as a gift. But I would wear those to the bridal nice AF. fair. Oh, of course. But never to a wedding. Are no. you kidding? Yeah. I would. I would wear my grubbies to a rental fair. You know, the stuff I change cat boxes in, you right, know? Right, right. Like, it's just I, a yeah. fair. It's fine. We gotta go. I mean, I wouldn't, but you know. I do. You could, you, and it'd be fine. You and I have an important wedding to attend next, or this. I gotta get into 2024 mode. I know, this, this June. year. This Yes. I'm so excited. Yeah. I love weddings. They're my son's getting sweet. married. So, yes, I always I thought, why, why... You know, when the bridal fair came along, like literally a week after Christmas or well, a week after the holidays, I thought, why? Mm-hmm. Why are we d- give it a rest? People just I'm so over commercialized and then these commercials start running for the thing. But then I realized, oh, most weddings are in June and they take six months to plan. And <laughs> can I, as someone who used to be in the bridal industry, sort of shed some light? Please. Okay, so a lot of the designers expect people to be engaged for about a year. Now, in this area, that's not exactly correct. Here, it's actually Engaged meaning, though, looking through things and going, ooh, that might be nice, and and putting that on their Pinterest. Oh, no, no, no. Like, actively planning, I mean. Oh, wow. Like, a lot of um, designers, uh, like Maury Lee, Maggie Sotero, um, even Mary's, expect you to be ordering stuff about... Four, five, six months in advance. Have they never heard of shotguns? <laughs> they have. And that's the thing. Um, because they're modern. We only cater to people who can afford birth control. <laughs> so here's the thing. It so has bougie. A, <laughs> it has a lot less to do with shotgun weddings. And, uh, and it has a lot more to do with the fact that people who are willing to spend time and effort on their weddings are also more willing to spend more money on their dresses. Yeah. So if you're doing a shotgun wedding, there are certain brands that will provide you a dress sooner for a cheaper price. That's what we need. We need a shotgun wedding bridal fair. (laughs) You know, honestly. Two weeks before June, (laughs) May 15th. And also, (laughs) the bridal shops around here have adapted to that in a lot of ways. Okay, wait. Adapted to what? uh, Shorter engagements. Okay. Not necessarily shotgun weddings, but... You know, because of the highly religious population that we have around here who don't want to have a long engagement, they don't have time to wait four or five, six months for a wedding dress. They have to, like, get that done in about three months. I will say I'm um, surprised. And, I, and again, no judgment. I, mm-hmm. I hope – look, we joke and I sort of uh, lean into my critical role <laughs> as um, – surveyor of all things but um really no judgment and no. and if you want I'll tell you my entire life story so you go oh shit so you have no judgment <laughs> um but um and my family's life story but it's fascinating to me to see 17 year old lovebirds and then I blink mm-hmm. two years goes by they're on their second kid they're they're married and they're on baby number two, and it's like oh ho! I mean it's just wow! It you know the Ferris Bueller life comes at you fast. Yeah. Uh, adapted or adopted by an insurance company, State Farm, whoever that was. But yeah, I like wow. Yeah. Well, and okay, you know it's funny. Yeah. So my mom got married when she was seventeen years old. Okay. Uh, probably engaged when she was like sixteen. Just uh, want to point out, still married. Yes, yeah. still married. 
Didn't have my brother until a year later. So it's not like it was a shotgun wedding or anything. Just, it's kind of, it's a really cute, sweet story. So my mom was having dinner with a, a guy friend of hers. No, like, super platonic. And he was like, hey, my brother's just getting home from his mission. Uh, He's going to join us here. I hope that's cool, dude. And she's like, yeah, that's cool, man. No problem. And that's how and she met your father? I kid you not. So here's the thing. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she's having dinner with this friend. He's like, hey, my brother's going to come. Hope that's cool, man. She's like, yeah, that's cool. And then my dad walks in. She turns to her friend. And she's like, that's a man I'm going to marry. And he turns to her and he goes, Dude, that's my brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so when they got married, my mom was 17. My dad was, I think, 21, 22. What a cradle robber. <laughs> right, right. Still married to this day. Um, and my mom uh, had my brother a year later. But some- Had me the year after that. Sometimes you know, you know. Sometimes you do, yeah. dude. Th- there's that whole, I went through that a lot. Like, I, I waited until... Late mid twenties, <laughs> lower upper middle class, <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I waited because one of the things I really struggled with was how do I know? How do I know? I don't know if I know. Right, right. You know, it turns out I didn't know. I didn't know shit. <laughs> but yeah, I was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> what what age were you? As two divorces <laughs> when you first got I was married. Twenty two. Same. Yeah. So you were saying. uh Something about 17-year-olds getting married. Oh, yeah, I'm surprised yeah, you know sometimes. someone who's 17. They're- um, With no judgment. You do you. Yeah, two years ago- If you on... feel like you're in love, do it. Right. And well, congratulations I mean, on your starter marriage. Okay, but realistically- I'm Kidding, here, mostly. Here I was actively saying, hey, I want to wait and like really be sure, and I'm the one who's divorced and they're not. So Right. right. It, has, it has nothing to do with age. It has to do with- um. Commitment. I think commitment and also communication, dude. You know, I I think that kids these days, <laughs> as we head into this bridal show, yeah. SEI bridalfair.com, I believe. Kids these days need to know that marriage is about love. Right. It is. And it's also about commitment. But also, you know, one of the things that I always say is that there is nothing that will keep a marriage alive, or let's say a relationship, there's nothing that will keep a relationship alive or kill it faster than communication. If communication is great, you guys can be together forever. If it sucks, yeah. you're screwed, dude. Yeah, and it's not just, uh, like, I feel like you and I have fun communication. Yeah. But it's also, there. there are times where we have very not fun communication. Yeah. But, and it's almost like, okay, I was at an impasse once about how to talk to my teenage kids. And somebody said, you can't just hit them with the important stuff. You have to let them know that the lines of communication are always open. Right. So not only communicate when it's necessary, but communicate when it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Keep them lines open. And honestly, that's actually a great piece of advice. At the end of the day, like, um, so my first marriage ended, and wah, wah. <laughs> and realistically, <laughs> well, no, it, I've had two end. I mean, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> not I, one to talk. That's the thing. I, I'm not really ashamed about it, and I think that had there been more communication, the actions taken wouldn't have ended the marriage. I think that there could have been ways that we could have worked before it, ideally, <laughs> and also through it. Yeah. You know, it's the fact that I was the one who had to instigate the, the communication that clearly needed to happen when it should have been my partner. I think that's a really good point. Well said, my mom is dead. And you <laughs> had to work that in. And, uh, funny. <laughs> fucked up, but funny. 500 points to me. Mm-hmm. In fact... Can you hand me this? <clears throat> with glee. Mike, it is with glee and also obligation that I give you 
the best person award for your very funny and also very dark joke. Bum, bum, <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Is that the Star Wars Why theme? Why do you get the Star Wars theme? I don't know. I'm already being played off by the Academy. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to thank my dead mom, and uh, oh. that's all we have time for. <clears throat> Happy Honda days. <laughs> Toyotathon has been extended for an additional month. OAC C dealer for details. Okay. Funny. Where were we? Um, marriages and communication <laughs> and oh, the whole joke of the you you see someone when when they're seventeen and then two years later they're on kid number yeah. two and that's a that's exactly the route that my mom followed and it worked out really well for her and the whole point is the bridal fair is about to happen. And the bridal shops around here have specifically adapted themselves to be accommodating to the more religious sect of people that live here. So, yeah, I wonder if uh, dads, now's the time to buy a shotgun, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they already have one. You don't have to tell them. What do you mean? <laughs> it's back the way you came. <laughs> no, but the point is <laughs> that because a lot of the folks around here like to have shorter engagements, uh, from my very small uh, sample that I had working in the bridal industry for about four years in this area, it tended to be about three to four months. And um, yeah. yeah, you can't order a dress in that time. Not from a designer. Okay. You can get them from some lesser designers, but not from like the higher end stuff. Yeah. So you can sometimes, here's the thing. That's not totally true. If it's in stock, you can sometimes get it quickly and easily from them. If it's not and they have to make it for you, then you have to wait and it could be on back order. The safe option is at least six months. I'm curious. Yeah. How much, and I just want you to throw out your number, the, a number at first blush. How much does a wedding cost? A wedding? A whole wedding. Go now. Number. Three, two, one. 10,000. Okay. I just wanted to know. Around here? About that. I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rely completely on your answer. I think that I spent about $4,000 on my wedding. Yeah. I, I did pay for the lion's share, mostly on credit cards. Um, and I worked in a bridal boutique, so I was able to get all of my attire for way cheaper than most people can. I had sure. my wedding at the Stanger Arts Building in Iona, and it only cost me $300 for a venue, which is amazing. And practically unheard of. It's why so many people have their churches or their um, weddings in Elias churches, uh, because they're free. Oh, yeah. My brother had one in one right. and isn't LDS. So uh, so there you go, kids. Or at least very cheap. SEIbridalfair.com. We'll see you this weekend. Anyway, and actually that 4000 was between my wedding and my honeymoon. Okay. Oh, well, there you I go. I spent. Wow. And I paid for our plane tickets and stuff, but... We also met our parents-in-law in Mexico City who had paid for a big bulk of the honeymoon stuff. So oh, that's right. He's your Mexican. Or your yes, Mexican. My, ex my Mexican. <laughs> yeah. But realistically, I spent about $4,000 between everything and my wedding. Um, that ain't bad, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. I don't think so, realistically. Yeah. For one of the biggest... If you're lucky, the biggest. If you're like me, one of the biggest days of your life. I would hope so. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, and the third or fourth biggest day of your life. Yeah. When you're 90 and on your deathbed. <laughs> but if I was breaking it down, you know, just your dress is like at least 600, probably more like a thousand. I'd say the average when I was working was like. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I'd say the average when I was working was like 800. So I, I think I mentioned earlier that I have three predictions for 2024. Mm-hmm. It's dangerous to make predictions, especially right. if people are relying on you. But I don't think that's the case here. It'll be entertaining. I will either have egg on my face or I will be like, Mike, you, you are, you're a genius. You're Nostradamus 2.0. But uh, I, I'm going to put 20 bucks on the fact that Albert Lin, mm -hmm. the guy I talked about earlier from the Hulu series or the or the National Geographic series Ancient Cities Revealed or what are Lost Cities Revealed? Uh huh. He's going to become the next meme. You remember? Oh, aliens. Yes, Giorgio <laughs> Sukalos from Ancient Aliens going aliens. aliens. <laughs> he's going to become a meme. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait. Get that hair all wild. Aliens. Yeah. 
And have you <laughs> like if you notice like his hair gets wilder and wilder from season to season, which is totally like the makeup, the makeup oh. and hair people who's who well, are doing that. Is it or is it classic male peacocking? Where he's like, oh, I'm getting a little attention. What if I do more of it? Oh. Maybe it'll happen to me. The the minute I won't allow it. <laughs> yeah, the minute you see me like with highlights and shit, you'll be like, oh, Mike's peacocking. He got a little attention and he wants more and more. So he's going to look crazier and crazier. I will only allow so much. <laughs> it's fun to watch that on my Facebook feed among single males who are like, I don't know. I don't want to say desperate, but desperately are- seeking... Actively trying to reinvent themselves. Right. And you know what? It's cool. Be who you want to be. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Be hot. Be young. Sure, yeah. Even if you're not, baby. Be black. Be white. Be male. Be female. Like, it doesn't matter anymore. Dude. It just doesn't. What? Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I mean, no. <laughs> Honestly, most off your tri- like, you're right. Yeah. Right. I mean, all these days, we're supposed to respect everything about you. It's like, you know what? No, I'm not. Don't tell me how to feel about you. Well, I no. don't have to respect anything. But it's it's polite conversation. True. You know, like if someone has a big dead tooth right in the front of their face, <laughs> y- you don't mention it. Why did you have to hit on that? <laughs> Why did you have to hit on? That's a trigger for me. You can't look like that around me. <laughs> well, and make sure you refer to me with the following words. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm not. I just won't refer to you. Problem solved. <laughs> Okay, That's that, but <laughs> okay, you hit on something and I, I just want to mention it in case people are wondering. In polite conversation, in public civil discourse, of course I'm going to respect you. Of course I am. This is our show for our shitty purposes, whatever they are. Mm-hmm. And it's where we get to sort of let it all hang out and, you know, sip some tea and let the claws out a little bit. You know, th- this is a, if we're doing this show right, the feeling you should get is you're sort of a fly on the wall watching two catty people be catty. Only I'm catty. <laughs> I'm kind of catty. A <laughs> little bit. A little bit. It's okay. I'm a little goblin. I don't mind it. <laughs> goblin needs nuts. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we fit everything else in this episode. Why not a D's nuts joke? Three predictions for 2024. Okay. Albert Lynn's going to become a meme. Mm-hmm. The other one is we are going to either hear about or fully see the earth mapped in an entirely different way with LIDAR. Oh, yeah. Crowdsourcing or Google Earth is going to beat Albert Lynn to the second or maybe third season Mm -hmm. of Lost Cities Revealed. And we are going to know everything about the Amazon rainforest. Mm -hmm. We're going to know where every shipwreck in history ever, ever is Mm -hmm. um, and how deep it is. And we're going to know all that stuff. Well, and you know the idea of reverse engineering? Mm -hmm. Once people know about a technology... They can reverse engineer it and create it again. So, yeah, now that people know of it, two nerds, let's say a horde of nerds, could go out and buy a lithograph. I've heard of nerds. (laughs) (laughs) A horde of nerds could go out and buy one, and they could all take it apart together and understand it and then go out and build one. Uh, And and a better one. And now all of them have one. Third prediction for 2024. I, and I've already seen signs of this. So I'm going to, uh, you know, I've I've burnt a little smoke and it's, and I've. You've done some divination. You've read your tea leaves. Thank you. Yes. Looked into a crystal ball. Exactly. Done a little tarot. It smells like incense in here. Mm. I predict (laughs) that somebody else has already seen what we're doing and has already started to copy us or do their own version of what we're doing. I think we're going to see a competitor. Is it fair to say in 2024? When I think it's inevitable. It's kind of already happening. And I will listen news organizations for the low 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 price of 1 million 1 million dollars. <laughs> I'll tell you how you can beat us. But I don't think they're going to and here's why. Mm-hmm. They don't have the balls. 
I don't think that uh, Dylan and um, what's his nuts. Uh, See, that's a point. The disgraced San Antonio guy, whatever. Anyway, I don't think that any of the local news organizations have the butts, nuts, or guts to put a podcast on the air where they delve into topic matters like we do and go deep and go a little crude like people do in regular private conversation. Yeah. We have put ourselves out there, and I don't think anybody else has the balls to do it, but I think they're going to try in 2024. Oh, yeah, of course. I feel like I've already seen them try. One other thing I want to mention is this is, and I'm te- we're telling you this as a public service, we're telling you this up front. I promise you, I, Mike Nelson, again, prick my finger, write it in blood, you are going to encounter either somebody who freely admits this or somebody who won't admit this Hmm. at all. Don't trust them. Seasonal affective disorder. Oh, sad. You know what I'm talking about? In the next 33 to 30 days to 60 to 90, it'll be magnified. Mm -hmm. People who just can't deal with this time of year. I have an ex and a very good friend. Yeah. Not the same person. No. (laughs) Who, um, who, Who always about this time of year... Now, it takes me a long, long time, a long time. I'm dense, people. It takes me a long time to recognize patterns. I am very slow to a conclusion. And once I reach that conclusion, I'm very quick to act, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I need data points upon data points. You are going to encounter friends, family, loved ones in the next few days to few months who feels sad for no explainable reason. Remember a couple episodes ago, we were talking about when somebody comes at you, bro, you need to maybe say, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Do you feel okay right now? This is the time of year where people, first of all, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, plain and simple, you're not getting enough vitamin D. Hi, not a doctor. Consult your physician. Unless you're a ginger. Did you know that the mutation that makes you ginger also makes it so that you don't need as much vitamin D. So you don't need as much vitamin D and you're more likely to see UFOs in an, as an Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> I got lots yeah, of weird stuff got- going on, man. <laughs> I'd like to think it makes me interesting, but you know what? realistically, it makes me maybe a little too interesting. <laughs> Carl, I want to say to you that you are unique and special. Stop. Just like everybody else. I know. I know. But realistically, like that mutation is actually a thing that yeah. you can study and it's a whole thing like biological. <laughs> but first of all, and look, you told, you taught me, you taught an old dog new tricks, which yeah, is, try. I was, I don't know. I was complaining about my state of being somehow. I feel lethargic and I don't feel energetic today. And you said, why don't you have a Red Bull? And I'm like, What? Okay, look, look, look. Half an hour later, oh man, I feel great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slay the day and get things done. Mm-hmm. And you said, Mike, we're all just chemicals, and we are, right? We are. We we're basically protein, water, and chemi- and a few chemicals, and maybe a little electricity up here. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, and I guess if we broke it down... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I acknowledge there's probably a soul in there somewhere. Well, I was going to say, I guess if we broke it down really, really small, we're all just atoms. Yeah. You know, and those atoms interact with each other. Yeah. it It's just how it works, dude. <laughs> so I'm just saying, if you know somebody with SAD, seasonal mm-hmm. affective disorder, get a SAD lamp. It's mm-hmm. like UV light right in your home. Um Dose them on vitamin D. Like a little lizard on a rock with a heating lamp. 5, 10, 15, <laughs> 20 milligrams a day? Not doctors. Again, you, not can't hold us, <laughs> you can't hold us accountable for this. I'm saying Google these things. Yeah. With a please. Or talk to your physician, dude. A thank you and a question you know mark. WebMD that. You'll probably have cancer. <laughs> now, that being said, if you have insurance, <laughs> if you have insurance, just go to a doctor, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and say, hey, I'm feeling a little blue. Yeah. I'm feeling... A little down in the dumps. Oh, I say, don't have any blue to feel, but um, <laughs> feeling say, blue. I, I mean, I could touch my eyeballs, but I'd rather not. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you could say, hey, doc, I've heard of this thing called sad. I think I might have it. Can I describe my symptoms? 
There's no shame in that game. And I also yeah. want to, full disclosure, say I'm a complete hypocrite because I'm sitting on a year's worth of prescriptions. I was prescribed um, a low dose, 10 milligrams a day of, I don't know, low fram, low pram. Zofran. Zo- Isn't that the tummy med? No. Wait. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I was prescribed 10 milligrams of some bullshit that I've never touched. And the reason is I figure I'm going to get my shit together someday. You know that meme? It's a screenshot of a tweet where it's like, step one, and there's a blank. Step two, a blank. Step three, a blank. Step four, a blank. Step five, and then you'll all be sorry. (laughs) Yeah, you know, world domination. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm not one to talk, but I just, I want to put that out there because so many people won't admit that it's a chemical thing, baby. Mm -hmm. Have a Red Bull a day for the next 30 days or whatever you got to do and, you know, get, get through this. It's just this time of year. And do you feel a little post-Christmas depression? Yeah. You know, or post holidays depression. That's the thing. It, it's kind of right between depression and relief. <laughs> okay, I'm you feeling know? right to to your point earlier. I completely understand. I get that, and I'm yeah. feeling just a little bit of. Even by mentioning it, I'm putting too much weight on it. Okay, uh huh. But I'm feeling a little bit of emptiness, and what I mean is, I got everything I wanted for Christmas. Mm-hmm. I got this extravagant pair of. The comfiest sweatpants made by man and modern technology. You're too nice. And thank you for those. I've got all the chocolate I could possibly want, except maybe what's over here. We'll get to in just a second. My heart is so full. And I guess I'm, you know, that expression, don't be sad because it's over. Be glad because it happened. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still a little, oh, it's over. Right, I still, right. I want one more week of Christmas music. <laughs> well, you can have it because we're in that weird liminal time where it's still technically Christmas also. But I mean, at least we're back to schedules and that's good too. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm I, I'm okay with that. I'll, yeah. you know what, I'll just make it extra special next year or whatever I got to do. Well, and also I don't have to worry too much about that because... Now, there's that nice little time between Christmas and my birthday. Yes. <laughs> and that means... To you can save up a paycheck and a half. <laughs> well, here's the beauty of it. Um, Technically, today starts the first day of my birthday. Mm. Your birthday month. My birthday. Car- <laughs> my whole entire birthday. <laughs> Carly's birthday is January 25th. Put it in your calendar. <laughs> okay, to be fair, I have a nephew who has his birthday on like you know, the 15th. So I kind of don't do too much before after then. But once his is over, it's mine. Okay. The rest of it is mine. So 10 days of birthday. <laughs> I will say I was a little upset when he was born in January because I was like, this is my it's month. Mine. How dare you? <laughs> hey, but I love quick. him. He's so cute. Want to want to give a big old shout out to Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. <laughs> we actually met with Lane, uh-huh. Lane Virgin, and his wife, Whitney, Whitney. Virgin. They they hooked us up, yo. Dude. These cups we're sipping out of, that is... Oh, and this logo, by the way, created by one Darkwing Designs. What's up? What's up? Hit him up for graphic design. Oh, What's nice. up, Dane? Every Dane time I hear, says... Every time I hear Darkwing, I think of Darkwing Duck. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just wanted to drop a Jane's Addiction reference just then, apparently. But also, but... how cool, dude. Thank thank you. Yeah. Oh wait, yours is different. Mine's so you got different. the Okay, I've got the sort of the cutting board and ta- I've got the logo. Yeah. Yeah. And and so we they were IFAF if you might remember a couple of weeks ago cuz they do something really cool. Yeah. For the Idaho Spuds hockey games. Mm-hmm. They donate $500 to the Snake River Animal Shelter. Every game there's a hat trick. Yes. And we we got to talking Whitney was like I think Whitney actually put the suggestion into Santa to bring us the Cheryl Teagues poster for me. She did, as a matter of fact. (laughs) Embarrassing, and I'll take it. (laughs) But uh, hey, thanks again, guys. It was great meeting with you and uh, and hanging out for a little bit, getting to know you. Yeah. And thanks for the swag. Thanks for the beef. (laughs) Where's the beef? (laughs) So... Lane started. Lane's a stud. Like he, uh... dude. Okay, can I just say how 
weirdly they parallel us. Yeah. Like realistically. They're sort of a Mike I, and Carly. I don't know if you could create a better pair of couple friends in a lab. Yeah, we're sort of their bizarro couple. Or, <laughs> right. But Lane's like into IT, the you know, the high tech stuff, but also the the man hand stuff. Like he started uh, Virgin mm. Riverland and Cattle Company with two cows in 2019, and now he's up to 40 head. You call him head? Head of cattle? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we about to taste some of it. <laughs> Let's talk about one other local thing before we go, can we? <gasps> yes, we sure can. And I'm so excited about this one. So remember, I, was talk- I heard you was talking shit. No. Uh, so remember, I was talking last week about Thor's chocolate. Okay. And I thought, well, we'll just see about that. Well, mm-hmm. we're about to see about that. Can I do a quick sidebar that does have to do with it? Yeah. So just today, I had a little kid talking to me, which I kind of love because little kids are so funny when they do. And before anything else he mentioned, he said, Santa brought me chocolate. And I thought that was really cute. He didn't worry about his toys. He didn't worry about anything else. He just talked about his chocolate for like the first three sentences of the conversation that dragged on way too long. Kidding. He was so cute, honestly. <laughs> but you know how I'm kids sure. are. Yeah. He he repeated that like three or four times because he was so excited about his chocolate. How old you know was what? He? Oh, he couldn't have been more than like three or four. He okay, was, then yeah, he that was, makes sense. Yeah. He was you know. <laughs> he's the he's he's still at that age where he probably played more with the box the toy came in <laughs> right, than the right. toy itself at yeah. this point. Mm-hmm. He was very excited about the chocolate. And I feel like a little kid at Christmas. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I can't wait for the chocolate. <laughs> so, I, and I don't know how to hand it to you, but let me grab this entire stack and just show it off to the camera. Um, I ordered a 10-pack. Christian from Thor's Chocolate gave me a bonus bar. Oh, ooh la la. <laughs> We're sitting on 11 bars of virgin chocolate. Now, have you ever Not- had... Technically, a baker's dozen, but kind of the ten bar equivalent of a baker's dozen. Yeah, because the idea is that he just throws in a little bonus one for funsies. You've, you know, you've tasted fresh chocolate, right? Like chocolate to the point where you're like, okay, for example, I mean, just a Three Musketeers. Most of the time, when you have one, they're average, but every once in a while, you'll get one, and it'll be like, whoa, this is like three months fresher. I don't know, because I don't actually eat Three Musketeers, because I think they're kind of gross. Okay, but any candy bar, and you know what? Okay. Right. Here's where I've experienced it recently, dollar store candy. Now, look, right. they must get the one-offs or whatever, mm-hmm. because I've never had good and plenty so misshapen as I have <laughs> from the dollar store, but they're fresher. Mm-hmm. And, and so I don't know about candy and distribution chains or any of that. They but probably here's, send them their uggos. Here's what I do. I think they do. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, batch 105793X to batch 105793Z. Mm-hmm. Those need to go. Those the, the We had a problem in the squeezy right, machine right. Well, and also, to be fair, good and plenty's just tend to sit on shelves for a while, so. I love them. <laughs> I know you do. I'm going to hand you a handful. So this is Thor's chocolate. Now look, I'm not going to kid you. This is spendy stuff. It's basically a hundred bucks for ten bars. That's right, ten bucks a bar. Oh, I really, have, Mike? Yeah. No, not really. It was like ninety-five. I've seen fourteen-dollar chocolate bars before. But there's no distribution. I literally went to Christian's house. Oh. You go to Thor'sChocolate.com, I think. Uh huh. Um, placed my order. You know, put in my credit card. Emailed and saying, ideally, we'd like these. Uh-huh. Got an email back like less than an hour later saying, great. Uh, and you can. Minimum order is. R- right. I think minimum order is 75 bucks if you don't want to pay any uh, delivery charges. Mm-hmm. Or um, look at you modeling those. I'm doing my best. But I said, you know, I'd love to just swing by and see your operation. So. I meet with Christian. He gives me these bars Uh and he tells me, so like he is the only, and I don't know in what kind of mile radius, but I'm going to say several hundred mile radius. The only uh, company around these parts here that makes it from, he gets the beans Mm -hmm. and he makes the chocolate and he puts it into a bar and you get it. Oh, so he's the only local traditional chocolatier. 
Yeah. Okay, have you seen that movie? It's got Johnny Depp in it. It's one of my favorites. Chocolat. Chocolat? Yes. Uh, is he basically the Johnny Depp's girlfriend equivalent of that right here? I don't remember what his girlfriend did. Oh, she, she made the, the chocolate. chocolate maker. Yeah. Yes. All I remember from that movie is when the local constabulary, the constable, was like so lustful of the chocolate that oh, he just yes. gorged himself. Yes, because it was Lent. Because it was, oh, okay. Yes, and then finally he could have the chocolate, or actually, no, I think it was before Lent was over. Oh, but I remember, sinner, sinner, sinner going to hell. Right, but I remember that Johnny Depp lived on a houseboat, and he like, I remember he made a joke about rats, and I was like, oh, rats are cute, what do you mean? <laughs> and I remember her and her daughter making chocolate, and it was just cute as, as everything. It was just adorable. <laughs> anyway. Chocolate. <laughs> so he was showing me his operation and like, okay, here's the beans. This is what I do to them. And then it did mix it with the, some stuff. And then here it comes out. And then reaches in the bins and said, okay, you wanted what of what? Um, I want two pineapple cream and I want a raspberry cream. And there's Ecuadorian milk chocolate, but also Ugandan milk chocolate. Uh, yeah, and there's also keto that. milk and there's also dark. I'm, I'm showing Ecuador it to me. Milk. I'll show it to you. Oh, I saw the U. It's, oh, I just, I just saw the Ecuador. I just finally saw Uganda. But the point I'm making is, this is hot and fresh out the kitchen. In our hands. Oh. I mean, this is only a few days old, and okay. we're about to try it. I say we pick just one flavor. Yes. Because, or, or else we're going to be here all night, and I know we're already over time on this show. So first and foremost, I'm going to vote for the pineapple cream. That's the one I was going to vote for. <laughs> also. But I'll pick a different one. He, You know what he said? He said, if you like milk chocolate, you need to try either the Ecuador or the Ugandan milk chocolate. So which is it going to be? Pick your, do you want Africa Ugandan. or South America? It's got to be Ugandan. Okay. Africa yeah. it is. Okay. Um, but when, so I saw the pack of it and I saw the pineapple cream. I thought all of these were pineapple cream. Oh, and yeah. And I was like, okay, you know that SpongeBob meme, meme the like, I love chocolate. And she says it really weird. It's when I missed that one, and Patrick I guess. are like selling chocolate bars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's weird. But anyway, <laughs> every time I hear chocolate, I hear that weird old lady fish's voice in my head saying chocolate. So while we're opening these, you know, so I'm fascinated by all things local. And I think so are you. You know, you love the branch and vine olive oils. I do. And um, poppy, pee pee poo poo. Poppy and that right. sounds terrible. It sounds like we're dissing them, but really, it's a very loving Poppy and nickname. Pal. Yeah, it's because I couldn't them. get it right for the first three times <laughs> yes. that Carly told me. It was funny, and I love them so much. Today, as I was walking to meet you, I, I passed by them. Holy and all packaging, I to do, Batman. I know, right? I am opening this wrong. But um, yeah, as scissors? I was walking by them, I can get some. I just wanted to look in the windows and love it. Do you have any scissors? Oh, thank you. Wait, are these the culinary scissors? Of course. Oh, wonderful. Although I will admit, I did almost grab the utility scissors. Oh, for shame. I know, I know. They were closer technically. Mikey has three sets of scissors in his home. We have the utility scissors <laughs> that are only for like Amazon packages. Mm -hmm. We have the culinary scissors. And then we have the scissors in my closet specifically for strings on my shirts. <laughs> so that's my system. Uh, do, oh, you got yours open. How did you do that? I have very strong hands from when I used to do I guess <laughs> acrobatics and stuff. I've actually got really good grip strength to the point where I have a weird little muscle here that most people Ooh. So, look at look at this. This is interesting texturing. Okay, on these. and also first off, that's white chocolate, which is my favorite. I know it is. <gasps> Not only white chocolate, but fruit flavored white chocolate. Yes. Is a big thing. So maybe I need oh to hand gosh, this to I'm you. So... I've opened the pineapple cream. Let okay, me give well, that wait, to no, you. No, no, You take the first bite because then when we trade it, I can then have the rest. Then you can hang on to yes. it like we did with the Jelly Belly sodas. Exactly. Okay. Now I've taken a nice little chunk out of Here mine. Here we go. You ready? Got a chunky boy, yeah. We're going to slowly enjoy this here. It's in my mouth. Great texture. <laughs> oh, whoa. Pow goes the and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> Pow goes the pineapple. So it's that melting in my hand that hits you, and then you get hit with the cream. Okay, mm. I don't want to describe this too too much until you taste it. But once you've tasted it, I want to tell you 
The secondary note that I tasted it okay. that I think is incredibly important in good chocolate, and this one has. Oh, man. Now, I'm not a big fan of white mm. chocolate, but I am a big fan of pineapple. I'm a big fan of both, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love white chocolate, probably because I'm so pasty. you gone to milk. Oh, oh, milky goodness. Mm-hmm. Oh, chocolatey <laughs> milky goodness. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? So for one, I was expecting it to be like jelly filled. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad it's not. Because I think that would have been too much. It sounds rad. It sounds like they should do that down the road. Mm. 50-50. But right now, we just want to taste the quality of the chocolate. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's just because I saw the operation, but I can almost taste... Like the chocolate beans. Did you get some down your, you got some down your popcorn tunnel? What do you call that? I mean, cleavage. I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I literally came up with that on the spot. Thank God it was the white chocolate to match my outfit. Because <laughs> it's definitely going to melt in there before I can get it out. It goes well with the ivory on your dress. I think so. I think so. Um, I like this better. You can have that. <laughs> this is, it's not like mm. the richest chocolate I've ever tasted. You know, it's not, this mm-hmm. doesn't taste decadent. I'm almost comparing mm. this to a fine wine. This is an everyday chocolate. I hate to say that. No, well, that makes it sound like it's common. Right. It's not. This is... So much better than Hershey or Nestle, mm-hmm. but this is um, this is the kind of chocolate you could eat every day and not get tired of. This is dangerous because mm-hmm. of that, right? Mm-hmm. right. Yeah, it's not overly oh, dec- decadent. Because mm-hmm. I would say it is decadent, but it's decadent like living in a fancy house, <laughs> you know, and having nice clothes. Like it's decadent. But you'll never get tired of it. Right. You know? Do you think, um, should we open the Ecuadorian milk chocolate to just to do a direct contrast and compare to see if we can taste the difference between Uganda and Ecuador? Should we be naughty? Yes. I let's think be, we should be let's naughty. Have, you know, and this, I think this New Year's Eve or this New Year's Day episode is an appropriate time to discuss the idea of the bad idea. You know when you're out to dinner and you get a dessert with two spoons and you've had all that you feel is responsible, but then you look at each other with a sly, coy, devilish look in in your your eyes and you say, should we have just one bad idea? (laughs) And the other person goes, oh, yeah, because they're fully on board. Ooh, look at that. So this is a different texture than the other two, which is kind of neat. Okay. Yeah. Now, I've got this fresh in my mouth. Do you want to? Do you want a bite of the um, pineapple to sort of refresh yourself? No, I want I want the Uganda in my okay, mouth. I'm going to start with this, and then I'll okay. take a bite of that. Man, we're taking way too long on this, but um, mm-hmm. hmm. I think it deserves it, don't you? <laughs> oh, and we're not food oh. critics, by the way. Hmm. Oh, oh, I can definitely taste the difference. And this, in my mind, is the clear winner. This is Ecuadorian? Yes. Okay. Uh, much smoother and lighter and milkier. Ooh. So, okay, let me tell you about the note that I noticed in the original one. Okay. I noticed a very strong caramel note in the um, Ugandan milk mm-hmm. chocolate. Now, the Ecuadorian one, I actually think I also like better. I'm going to double check by tasting this one next. It's smooth. Just to make sure. It's so smooth. It's and, ridiculously smooth. Okay, and it's almost got a tartness to it. Almost Silky. Like, almost like it was made out of goat's milk, which I know sounds weird. Is it to weird talk to say chocolate, it's but... earthier? No, that's exactly what it is. It, it's not so artificial. It tastes natural. I mean, like, like mama nature. <clears throat> yeah, like it's just Mama Nature's cuddling okay. me a little bit more. Seriously, like the... I can't believe we're having this conversation, but Mama Nature is cuddling me a little bit more on this mm-hmm. Ecuadorian chocolate as opposed to the Ugandan. Right. Okay. 
The Ecuadorian chocolate tastes like, okay, if I'm comparing it to cheeses, because of course I will. They're both dairy products. It's fair. Ecuadorian chocolate is goat's milk, which is my favorite. I love me a goat's milk. But the uh, Ugandan chocolate is more like a nice cheddar. You know, it's sweeter. It's almost artificial tasting, whereas the goat's milk tastes like it came straight from the ground through the teat into <laughs> your into your cheese. Can I give you, know? you my lousy analogy? Yeah. Okay. The Ugandan milk chocolate is more like, oh, hi, mom. Mm. The Ecuadorian chocolate is mama. <laughs> <laughs> like a toddler running to his mommy. Oh, it's so just, good. Just so desperate to see his mother again. Oh, mama. Mm-hmm. I get mm-hmm. that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Man, you know who would love this? My dead mom. <laughs> no. She would. Okay. The Ugandan Why farmer- weren't you a couple years earlier? Man. The Ugandan has a more toffee flavor to it. And I feel like the Ecuador has a more- earthy flavor to it this is this is what a time to be alive yeah what a time to be alive also in wild idaho falls idaho yeah i never thought i'd see the day oh and i didn't tell you this so after he was all done explaining it to me i looked at him and i said oh some so for you're the only one for miles around who makes chocolate from bean to the bar and he said yep and as i was driving away I, I was patting myself on the back going, I deserve a, you know what, buddy? That one's free. Mike Nelson, marketing mm-hmm. expert mm-hmm. from bean to the bar. Yeah. I thought, what a clever slogan I just gave him for free. Look down at the bar. From bean to the bar. So no! either. So I'm, I don't know what focus group you use to come up with that, buddy. Mm-hmm. But um, first of all, excellent, accurate, great slogan memorable and um great minds think alike can we just say that and the whole thing by the way you want to talk sustainable this his whole operation powered by solar energy he's got i like saw his rows of solar panels and you can too man that's so cool what's funny is i wish i could say more about it but i'm too busy (laughs) I'm just eating that, all this yeah, chocolate. Can you break me off another piece? I've had I feel so many bites while you've been chit chatting. Yeah, I I feel I feel like the constable in chocolat. <laughs> right, you want to gorge yourself? Well, on and this? we have like five other ones to try. No, 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 not the white stuff. Ew. Uh, no, <laughs> kidding. You're the worst. I feel uh, like you the- want some of that mom's milk. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I want some of the mama. <laughs> um. <laughs> So good. I feel like the constable in chocolat. Mm-hmm. This this I would gorge myself on sugar rush and crash right. in the front window of any Idaho Falls business. <laughs> yeah, hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> you want a window display for the holidays? <laughs> It'll be like Elf. <laughs> you'll, no. you'll you'll hold a little carolo- caroler. I just want to smear it on my face and take a <laughs> bath in it. Right, man. That's good though. I can't get over how how different those two milk chocolates are. The aftertaste, I mean, the taste good, the aftertaste, whoa. Bam. Whoosh. I really like the white chocolate. <laughs> Crazy lady. I do. It's my fave. In fact, let's let's take this all the way and say <clears throat> Thor's chocolate, you are I F A F this week. Mm-hmm. Chris Pie five. Whoosh. 21 finger gun salute. Pew pew. Chef's kiss. To you. Sugar drunk constabulary. <laughs> to you this week. This is amazing. Yeah, no. My poor dog. I, I'm so he's. This is not a floor. paid endorsement. We haven't hit that no, level yet. We've paid them to endorse we are, We're stuff. looking for sponsors in yeah. case, you know, you know uh, somebody with in deep pockets. In case you got a fat wallet and a kind heart. <laughs> I actually think at this point in our show, we're more likely to get a sponsor to pay us to shut the hell up. Oh, kind of like uh, dueling pianos only. Sort of like government <laughs> subsidies to farmers. Yeah. We'll pay you $100,000 a year to not produce <laughs> the corn <laughs> or the potatoes or whatever. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's a messed up analogy and it happens. It does. I get it. But anyway, uh, wow. yeah, we literally paid to endorse these guys. 
and they're so good. I wonder if he, one question I didn't ask him is, does he use Majolner to pound out the <laughs> beans? <laughs> to crush the beans? Thor's hammer? I do kind of wonder why I he still don't know Thor. how to pronounce that. Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Yeah, uh, yeah, you found that on the web. You're here, Mjolnir. <laughs> Thank you. Great Thank you Titanic call back to end the episode. I saw it in a meme. <laughs> we have nothing left. We've given you all we have to give. Mm -hmm. And we know it's not very much. Yeah, but you know, it's enough to get you into the new year. And I think it's enough to really set you up for all of the good luck you need. Honestly, the Ecuadorian chocolate is what I picture the river in Willy Wonka tasting like. Yes, I could see that. <laughs> so smooth and silky. Um, Rich and decadent. Oh, okay. So you know how all of your New Year's resolutions fail? My New Year's resolution is to use Thor's chocolate to get real fat. <laughs> 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 That's my plan. I bet it would work. If you really... I mean, if I had the money to invest. If you really commit yourself, though, you've got mm -hmm. to make a commitment. Yeah. You know, yeah. like a bar a day mm -hmm. will keep the weight loss away. Yeah. I think I could do it. <laughs> you know, where's that one dietitian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About goal setting, though, one thing that I've just recently been informed of, because apparently I didn't know this, you can't just set a goal. You have to set a goal and a date. Mm-hmm. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Try not to suck so much by January 25th. <laughs> Funny. And Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Full of new fears. Yeah. Just kidding. Full of new beers. Happy New Year. Have a new beer. Happy New Fears. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark. I know. <laughs>